What I'm going to show you now is how to uh, create a fisheye lens effect for your camera and your view scenes. And the first thing we're going to do is load in a sphere. We're just going to put the sphere around the camera. Or actually, uh, at first, we can just bring it down and just put one section, and we don't want to center it. And what I'm going to do is go into the options for the sphere, the material options, and actually uh, load in a material. I'm going to select glasses, and I think standard glass will do, so I'm going to click OK. And now we can see the glass uh, on the camera right now. Uh, but it might be a little difficult to get the right effect, so I'm going to move our camera up and rotate that so we're at back to zero so we don't have that default tilt which can uh, sometimes interfere and I'm gonna squish our glass down and bring it in a little bit closer to the camera and what I'm also gonna do is I actually have to change uh, the camera's focal so I'm gonna drag that out just a little uh, we don't want to bring it out too far uh, but just enough so that we can see just some of the things that we would get from a wide-angle lens. I'm just kind of positioning this over the camera and looking at the preview uh, to see exactly how it's looking right now. And what I'm going to have to do is actually go into our uh, material editor for our glass and turn off cast shadows and receive shadows click OK and this way we don't have any shadows of this casting on the ground. Now we can notice that our sphere is not positioned or centered so I'm going to go ahead and do that and we can see we were getting a little bit of reflection from the lens uh, but we're going to change the settings on that uh, in just a minute. So I'm going to zoom out our other views really quick and I just want to load in a reference object so that we can see uh, so far what this glass and the focal settings are doing to our scene. So I'm going to load in just a cube here and we're going to see how this cube looks. You can see as we bring it closer uh, that it's not square and it is being stretched out by the refraction of our glass over our lens. And I'm now I'm going to drag it out so we can see just if a long sphere was in there, what would happen, or a long cube. And we can tell that it is stretching it out around the edges, as it should be, uh, if you would have an actual fisheye lens on this camera. And then we can see that it gets very blurry around the edges, uh, to the point where we really can't even see anything. Uh, but if we actually did have a fisheye lens uh, with this much of a wide angle on it, uh, what would happen was this would actually just be black anyway and we'd be seeing uh, so much information that it would be completely spherical since the lens is uh, spherical and we would actually end up seeing just uh, these actually cut out and black so right now that really doesn't matter uh, because it does look as it would look just without those black rims around which we can actually add uh, once we get the lens all fix fixed up here so we can also adjust uh, how much this lens is refracting just by adjusting the refraction index on it. So we can select our sphere, go to the material editor, and then under uh, transparency we have our refraction index. Now right now it's set to 1.52, which is pretty much glass. Uh, 1.333 would be water, uh, but we can also up this a little bit higher and do our own custom ones. We don't even need to really worry about uh, what we are perfectly refracting because we're just creating our own here. And I'm going to click OK and now you can see we're refracting even more and we have uh, even an even bigger cutout uh, on this lens. So we'll go back into there and we want to refract it a little bit less. We'll try 6-7 and maybe a little bit less than that. And the higher we go or the lower we go we actually increase the size of that circle. So I'm going to just bring it back to 1.5 and actually leave it right there right now. Uh, but what I want to create now is that black outline that we'd normally have when we're using a fisheye lens. And we can do that pretty easily by creating a plane. 
and then I'm going to rotate that holding down shift so that we can actually scale this uh, proportionately and as far as the rotation so that it uh, sort of clicks into place um, and I'm going to zoom out on one of these other layers and actually I can bring this down just a bit zoom in and now I'm going to create a cylinder and with the cylinder I'm going to hold on shift and rotate that 90 degrees and just move it up and position it over our plane and just cut it through because we're going to be doing a boolean subtract so we just got a picture we're uh, using this object to cut through this other object so I'm going to select our plane and then our cylinder and select boolean difference and this will cut out our shape uh, that we need to create that sort of mask and we're just going to select it and bring it down uh, sort of in front of the camera just moving it into position and now we can see uh, what this looks like in the camera view and from the top view I'm just going to slowly pull this in let go so that we can see uh, how the boolean is looking drag it in a little bit further maybe a bit further and we have to let go of the object in order to actually see its position because the OpenGL view does not always refresh quick enough and that looks like that's actually going to be good for right now uh, of course our preview in our window is not actually uh, the preview in the scene because of that lens so you can see right now it's actually over and casting shadows on our object so we actually need to bring that in even closer and then we're gonna change the surface of this to black and see if that actually comes in uh, where we have this bit of transparency uh, but even if it doesn't it'll make it a lot easier in post-production to actually uh, change this so we're just gonna load in a material and just select flat black and click OK and now we can see I have this black rim on here but it's not uh, completely showing up and removing the parts of the image that it should be and that's because of the refraction of that glass so what we could either do is make the refraction uh, just a little bit smaller uh, a lower number in the refraction index chart so we go to transparency and lower that refraction index down to 1.23 click OK and see how that preview looks and now what we have to do is grab that uh, object we created and we can pull it forward but first I want to take a look and see how our scene is still looking with that lower refraction index does it still look like a wide angle lens or a fisheye lens and it still does it just doesn't have as much distortion but that's okay we can bring it to the very edge if we wanted to uh, so we can get the most distortion out of it possible without uh, those edges coming in but I'm just gonna grab our difference object that we have right now drag it in a bit closer so we can start to get that cut out around the edges just that black and maybe we just need to drink bring it just a little bit closer to the lens and there we go now we just have sort of the edges uh, being removed and shown in black and we need to make one more addition, uh, additional uh, change and we're going to double click on this preview go to our material editor and then turn off cast shadows and receive shadows and click OK now before we can uh, move our camera around we're going to need to take these two objects we created the sphere and the difference and actually link those to the camera so I'm going to hold down control and select the sphere with the difference selected and I'm going to group these objects together and now we have one group with two different surfaces within it and I'm going to go to this last tab up here and link this to the camera the main camera and select our camera now and we can uh, move ourselves around the scene 
and actually see what's going on. And the best way to really do it is to look at our preview right here on the right, because that way we can see the refraction and what's being rendered. Now if you notice too, we also have um, some specularity in here. <laughs> so when we position the camera, we're getting some uh, light distortion reflecting. Uh, so what we actually need to do is turn off specularity and turn off reflection if it isn't in there. So what I want to do is uh, select our glass surface and we are going to go to the highlights tab and I'm going to select none and we want to make this a very dull object and I'm going to go ahead and click OK and we'll see that that disappears and we still have our distortion because all of our distortion is actually being caused by the refraction of the transparency. So I'm going to go to transparency and make sure we're at 100 just in case we're not. And then under reflections we want to make sure it's set to zero and it is. So now we can render our scene and see the refraction of our glass uh, affecting our scene and uh, see the black edges around the sides and we can see that, that it does look like a fisheye lens. Uh, so you could either save this whole object out so that you can load it into your other scenes, you could do that, or you could just create it every time. I would highly recommend that you save this as a file so that you can uh, load it up in other scenes. So it's a pretty neat little thing we have here. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that the open, OpenGL, once we're moving the camera, is not actually working because it's showing this uh, Boolean object. And the Booleans don't work while the camera is moving and the OpenGL doesn't show up. So what we can actually do is go to this group and while we're positioning uh, we can select hide from render. And then uh, it won't affect our scene at all. Uh, we won't actually see the refraction uh, but this is just for majorly placing uh, some of the objects. And even though it's hidden from the render we're still sort of having that OpenGL problem. Uh, so sometimes there's really not much you can do about it we're going to hide it from the render right now. Uh, but you can either load it in as a uh, last part of your scene. So if you already have this saved, uh, we can save this object out. And then we can create our scene, position our camera exactly where we want it, and then add the fisheye uh, so that we don't have to worry about the OpenGL uh, interferences.